Hey guys, in today's video, we have some really fun and cool experiments going on. So today we have, as you can see, four different trays grown, four different methods in common microgreens practice. And we're gonna show you what is the best, the worst, everything in between with these different growing methods and how you guys can apply it to your business or if you're just growing microgreens at home for fun, how to get the most results in the small amount of space you're growing in. So let's get right into it. For this growing experiment, we kept as many variables the same as possible. So we used uh, a red stem radish seed from Johnny Seeds that is the same among all trays. We used the little green seeding machine to seed all four of these trays perfectly evenly. So they all got exactly 24 grams of seed. And then the differences was in the soil. So this tray, we used something called the hemp grow mat which is something that a lot of growers use, especially the ones that are growing hydroponically. So we used that soil meaning for this tray. And on top of that, we added in a liquid chemical fertilizer to about 200 parts per million of nitrogen. And then it had phosphorus, potassium, and some micronutrients. This tray is the same as this one, except there was no nutrients. So this was just completely reliant on the seed. So the hemp grow mat, the seed, and then all four trays, including these two, were top coated with vermiculite also with the little green seeding machine. Next, we have uh, this tray, which was just grown in ProMix HP, no fertilizer added. And then this was grown with our Super Soul recipe. And as you can see, all four trays have pretty dramatic differences and uh, I'm excited to share the results with you guys. So we'll do the first uh, part of this. We'll do it a little bit differently this time. We're gonna do a taste test. So we're gonna taste all four and see the differences in taste and visual appearance. So one thing I noticed with the two much smaller trays, which are the hemp grow mats, the color of the stem is much darker than, than the ones grown in ProMix. And I think this is because um, what I've seen in my 10 years of growing microgreens and farming, when a plant is starving for nutrition, uh, they'll often um, change color. And I don't know if it's a defense mechanism, but I've noticed this that uh, even in tomato plants, you'll find if they're low in phosphorus, uh, the stem will start actually turning purple and same thing with the leaves, which is very interesting. So there may actually be more uh, of certain phytonutrients in these ones that are grown in a, what I would call a more stressed environment than the ones that are grown in a, um, a more plant paradise type of environment where they're getting all the nutrition um, that they can possibly uh, need. Now, the, now, what I would assume is that these guys, especially the Super Soul recipe, would have much more minerals, um, protein, uh, and certain phytonutrients, whereas these guys, because of the color, would have certain phytonutrients that are color-based uh, in higher quantity. Uh, but you can't eat as many greens because there's not as many of them. So let's do the first taste test. So again, this is the, this is the hemp grow mat with the 200 ppm of nitrogen uh, and other chemical nutrients as well. It's really sharp radish flavor. So this red stem variety in and of itself uh, is quite a strong tasting radish. Um, but that was, that was quite strong. Like from one leaf, it had a lot of spice. Now let's try the super soil recipe, which as you can see, the stem is not as, <coughs> wow, that is spicy. It is not as uh, red, still has a red tinge to it. I would say it's more pink than like a deep red. More crunch. You can taste more like water content, more moisture in it. Still spicy. I would say maybe slightly less spicy, but still like quite a quite a bit of spice to it. So not a huge major difference in flavor other than this has got a bit more crunch. And um, and this one, uh, the, obviously the color difference was, was the biggest one so far. Now, this was with the fertilizer. This one also interestingly has um, a very dark red stem compared to the ProMix uh, variants or soil recipes. Um, and this had fertilizer. Uh, now these grew bigger, I can tell right away, but not significantly so, not so much that they're gonna catch up to the soil grown um, trays. One thing I didn't mention with this one, wow, yeah, they're definitely spicier, um, is they're more fibrous. So they're more tough, they're less tender. And I think it's just because the plants honestly are stressed. So if you put, an example, a lettuce plant, you grow one indoors and you grow one in like a windy, cold environment, 
um, or a really hot environment, it's gonna be more stressed and it's gonna have more fiber to it is what I've noticed. So now this one is the Pro Mix without the uh, super salt recipe, so just plain Pro Mix. Now let's give this one a try. This, the, this one's similar spice level to this, maybe a little bit spicier. It doesn't have the same crunch or like thickness of the leaf as these. So they're not as, um, as water rich. So they're not as crunchy. They're still more crunchy than these, but the Super Soul definitely has more crunch to it than, um, than the non Super Soul recipe. And yeah, so that's kind of what the, uh, what the taste and looks different. So the main difference is color between the uh, hemp mats and the uh, Pro Mix recipes. And then you have the difference between uh, a little bit spicier, tougher. These ones are more mild. And then the Super Soil is more crunchy, but still these two both have quite a strong spice to them. So now let's get to harvesting them and see what the yield results are. So quick reminder, you want to use a really sharp knife when cutting microgreens. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Just be careful and uh, to not cut your fingers and make sure that you disinfect your knife with something that will kill any potential bacteria on it, especially if you're using a knife that you use in your kitchen. These just look absolutely beautiful. These guys are definitely not as colorful. Still has a nice hue to it, but just not as colorful. The results are in. And once again, we got some mind blowing numbers to share with you guys today. So we'll start with the hemp mat with chemical fertilizer. We got 140 grams for this tray. And uh, you can see if you compare kind of the four here, um, you can see it's a, a, it is a darker green leaf and a darker red stem so visually it's in my opinion definitely a nicer looking microgreen next we have the super soil pro mix recipe and this came in at 298 grams for this tray and again keep in mind some people may be like oh i've gotten 400 grams on uh, radish i could have cut the stems longer but the whole point is to have a high quality microgreen so 298 grams i give that a thumbs up that's a pretty good yield next we have the Promix HP on its own with no fertilizer, so no super soil recipe. That got 259 grams. Still really good result, really high quality microgreen overall. And then last but not least, we have the hemp mat with no fertilizer. And this one also much darker green than the Promix soils. This one has the darkest stem. Now that I could see it side by side. This one definitely has the darkest stem without having any fertilizer. And it has a pretty dark color green leaf as well. And this one got 137 grams. So pretty much on par with the chemical fertilizer. So this is interesting. This is not what I would have expected. So I might do some more testing on hemp mats um, and see if I can increase the yields on them for those that really do want to grow with them. But as you can see, you're getting more than double yield with uh, either the Pro Mix or the Super Soul recipe. Now, the one, the, what I always recommend is people to use the Super Soul recipe because that is, you know, what in my opinion provides overall the best results for microgreens and it's very cheap as we're gonna get into the numbers in more detail. Uh, but you can see there is a, a, a strong correlation between amount of nutrition in the soil and the color of the stems in this particular variety of radish. So even between the, the regular Pro Mix and the Super Soul recipe, the Pro Mix in and of itself has a darker colored stem, which um, really, I, I wouldn't have expected that, but I think it's really cool that the more fertilizer you have, the faster it seems the plant can grow and the less stressed it is. And that correlates with having a, a more crunchy and less fibrous uh, stem in the super soil versus the regular Pro Mix, and especially compared to the hemp mat grown trays. So very interesting results. Not exactly what I expected, except for obviously I knew Super Soil was gonna perform well. Um, now let's get into a, a little bit more of the numbers. So um, if you take your Super Soil recipe, for those that aren't growing the Super Soil, you can download our free growing guide on our website, um, which gives you the Super Soil recipe, our lighting recipe, and our full uh, you know guide on how to grow microgreens at home with ease. Uh, totally for free on our website. And so if you compare the super soil to the regular pro mix, you're getting a 15% higher yield per tray. So that in and of itself is, I think, well worth it. 
because um, that means you can grow 15% less trays and get the same yield. So you can save time on your labor, whether you're growing as a home grower or as a commercial grower. Comparing the super slow recipe to the hemp mat with chemical fertilizer, which was the second best yield, we got 112% higher. So more than double the yield from the super soil to the um, hemp mat with chemical fertilizer. So uh, just from a business perspective or a consumption perspective, you can grow literally less than half the number of trays and get the same yield, which is impressive. Having said that, these ones do look really nice. They don't taste as good in my opinion, but they really are beautiful. So there is something here where there might be something that some of you guys can use to get colors, but um, on specific varieties that you're looking for to have a strong color, but you're gonna really sacrifice yield for that color, it, it appears in this test at least. Um, so now we're gonna get into the numbers from like a business perspective. So radish is usually sold in about 75 gram clamshells for those that sell it uh, in retail, and that would sell for uh, about $6. So from the super soil to the regular pro mix, you're gonna be getting uh, $3.12 extra revenue per tray and extra profit actually because it costs the same uh, to, to grow it, um, except for the fertilizer, which is 17 cents. So you're gonna get an extra $3.12, less 17 cents in profit by using the SuperSol recipe. Now the return on investment by using SuperSol versus ProMix is a staggering 1,735%. So by spending 17 cents, you're gonna get that 15% extra yield of using super soil versus regular pro mix, and that's gonna give you a 1,735% return. And again, I don't know, I'm not, you know, I study business, but I ain't, I ain't no expert at investments, but I can tell you that that is about as good as it gets when it comes to a return on an investment. Even if you invested Bitcoin early in the day, I don't even know if you'd be able to get that kind of return. So um, education is very powerful, which is why I do a lot of work in the education space on microgreens, whether it's consulting, the podcast I have, doing experiments like this for you guys so you can see why you should grow a certain way and maybe not grow another way, depending on you know your system and what makes sense for you guys. But just wanted to put this out there and let you guys see what the differences are because there are definitely benefits and disadvantages to the Super Soul compared to this product in terms of color um, and uh, and that richness in the color, but in terms of yield and from a business perspective, or even just growing for yourself, I would personally prefer this because it tastes a lot better. And when you're selling a food product, the number one reason someone's gonna come back and buy that product again is the taste. Uh, there's also packaging, aesthetic, and yes, this one definitely looks more aesthetic uh, in a package, but if someone buys it and they're like, ooh, that's like not what I was expecting, and they buy this and they're like, oh, that's pleasant, they're gonna buy this even if it may not look as good. So aesthetics are important, but I think flavor is always number one in my books when growing microgreens or selling a food product. So hope that helps you guys. And uh, if you wanna see any more growing experiments with uh, hemp mats or anything else, just put in the comments below and we will see if we can make that happen for you guys. So thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.